I, I think it's mainly the hunger. It, that's the thing I'm most um, the happiest that I just kind of got naturally is that for some reason I just I want it so bad. Welcome. Uh, my name is Jeff Watts, and I'm going to be doing my the most recent um, podcast and a series of podcasts I'll be doing, and I'll be doing a variety of podcasts, but. Right now, I'm focusing a bit on the instructors at our atelier, Watts Atelier, and I did one with Eric, and hopefully you tuned in for that. Um, it was a lot of fun. Today, I'm going to be actually interviewing another instructor of ours, which is Stan Prokopenko. Stan's been with me, um, geez, I think since you 11 were... 11 years. 11 years. Since I was 16. 16. So, I met him originally at a um, high school where I was out doing a... Uh, some demonstrations and, and what was it was it Westview or what was it no it was Mount Carmel Mount Carmel yeah. well that was that was you were one of those uh, <clears throat> one of those uh, students that we had that had a rare opportunity at such a young age with parents that were really receptive you know yeah. to to the program and coming in and actually going fairly full-time and I think on your blog you have posted all of your classes you took and the kind of course of action you took through the school yeah I think three or four years ago I did I went through all the brochures and I looked at all the classes I took, and I, I would mark every class. I kept the folder yeah. of every class I took, so I had that history. And so I went through and I looked at all the classes I took and I published it on my blog, and I just kind of did like a little review of um, every year and how, how much I improved, and I showed some oh, pictures excellent. from each year. So yeah, it, it's a... Uh, I wish we'd done that with everybody, but you were one of the few people yeah. that took the initiative to do it, which is really cool. I, I'm kind of... I'm weird. I'm, I'm really organized in some areas and very disorganized in others. <laughs> I think we're so all that things way. like that, and it's really weird. I just like kept the log of everything. That's good. That's really yeah. that's admirable, though. I mean, I know because in the beginning, I'd always tell people when you first come to the atelier, save your first drawings. And I used to save mm -hmm. everybody's first drawings, but we've had so many people come through that I couldn't, I couldn't keep track of everybody and, and every drawing. Yeah. And you didn't know who was going to really stick it out. But um, the progressions are really, really, really neat, and and yeah. we don't have a lot of. A lot of progressions, um, as many as I would like, for how many people have gotten good at the atelier. So, a lot of people always ask me, you know, what, how long have I been drawing? And um, really, I've been drawing my whole life. I mean, my I, I was sketching as a little little kid, but it was not, never really uh, anything special. I was just doodling. You know, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. But at least I was holding the pencil, right? And I was thinking visually. And so I think uh, in that case, I did have kind of a head start. Um, but then I actually remember the day that I decided to be a professional artist. It's how really was, weird. How old was that? I was a sophomore in high school. So, sorry, I was a freshman in high school. And it was um, really what made me really excited about it was my animation class. Mm -hmm. um, it made me excited not just about animation, but just drawing and art altogether. And so I would go home and I would draw and I remember one night I just stayed up really, really late drawing and um, I didn't want to go to bed. I just had a lot of energy, but it, I had to wake up to go to school the next day. Right? <laughs> so um, I just kind of forced myself to go to bed. And while I was going to bed, I, I just decided like, I'm going to, I'm going to be a professional. Gonna yeah. That's what I don't think I ever knew that about you. That's, that's yeah. cool. That's I, neat. I actually just remembered that recently because when I decided, I actually made a note. I was like, I need to remember that this was the day that I decided. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I actually remember. That's why I remember that as the day. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. It's amazing when you set yeah. a uh, a cause in motion, where you think of something like that, or write it down, a goal, a long term goal, mm -hmm. and it's it's that's some of those are the most, um, you know, I guess most dynamic things you could do. I mean, for setting a course yeah. in act of action that would would. And, and making that decision changed how much I focused on it too. Yeah. I mean it. I, I was much more serious about it at that point. I actually thought of myself as a professional, even though I was only a freshman in high school. I, just, <laughs> I knew that if, in order to become a professional, I had to have that mentality yeah. at that point. And, uh, and so that's why when I was a junior, I asked my teacher if there's any more schools around because I, I wanted to keep going. I and knew boy, that, man, that was, a, that was a stroke of luck, I guess, in general. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of things kind of just fit together. You know, good parents that were supportive. Um, I, for some reason, I just I had that hunger. Mm -hmm. You know, I I didn't create that for myself. I just have yeah that drive. Just, that, that some drive. people it just inherent. It's inherent in them. Yeah, and then um, really good role models, right? I mean, just I was really lucky to have the school right 
in your in backyard. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's rare for a lot of people that get to come here. Yeah, that kind of leads me to my next one, which is you know, and again, this is something you can kind of. It doesn't need to be a specific, but your favorite period in art or illustration. But you're probably primarily probably more fine art than illustration driven, but. But still yeah. like a lot of the illustrators, I'm sure. I do like a lot of the illustrators. I When I was um, really focused on studying, when I was a full-time student, uh, I actually did study a lot of the illustrators, even though I wanted to be a fine artist. Uh, like Rockwell, Cornwell, you know, all the the big guys there. Yeah. Um, but I, I also enjoy a lot of the Russian artists. Um, they're a lot more loose and just expressive, and I really like that feeling that you know every um, each one of them is obviously has their own style you know they, they don't you, you can tell when you look at their paintings that they just kind of let go and they um, they do it with with heart mm -hmm. you know just just very expressive brush strokes and um, and that's very inspiring um, so it's like a really good balance between knowledge and craft and expressing I would agree. So, I mean, I, yeah. I, I see that same correlation in a lot of the Russian painters where they're just, um, you know, I guess my, my whole take, which is similar to what you were saying, is just that they don't seem to paint for monetary kind of commercial aspects. Yeah. They're a little more honest mm -hmm. painters, it yeah, seems honest. like. Right, yeah. yeah. Deceased is a little easier thing to answer. Repin mm -hmm. or Ilya Repin in Russian. Mm -hmm. um, and then living, it's a little harder. Uh, the longest, the one that's been on my favorite list for the longest time has been Morgan Weisling. Mm -hmm. um, I'm slowly kind of going towards um, slightly more abstract uh, people, um, not as real as far as, you know, s staging the scene. Mm -hmm. um, so. Well, that's good. I mean, he's he's a good guy to. I mean, you know, he's right up there with as far as yeah. I mean, he, he's painters. still one of my favorites. I mean, it, yeah, I think he will always be one of the favorites. He's just so good at his craft. Right now, rocking it. Um, Chinese guys, any of the? So, well, I mean, there's a couple of those guys that are pretty. Calvin amazing. Liang, I think he's starting to really get up there. Um, he just recently, I guess he did one of his first big paintings, mm -hmm. and he was at the um, the Autry mm -hmm. show, and that was amazing. I mean, he he's been doing plein air paintings for a while. And now he's <clears throat> moving up to larger scenes, and there, you can tell he's going to be really, yeah, really. His prices are probably going to yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're so cheap right now, and yeah. So they're they're going to he. So I think he's rocking it. Um, uh, Casey Baugh was one that I uh, kind of discovered recently. I think he's really good, and not just in his and in, um, in the the skills, but also just in marketing and just yeah. being a professional artist. Yeah. Casey Baugh and um, David Kassan. Yeah. Those guys. Yeah, they're out there a lot. Yeah, always present. I always see them, you know, social yeah. media. They're all over the place. Yeah. So, you know, those are the kind of guys I look up to and uh, just as Good choices. role models. Yeah. It's, yeah. And they're young, too. So Yeah, you know, it's kind of nice kinda, to look at people yeah. of a similar age group because you're kind of thinking we're kind of all in together. Mm -hmm. They're probably battling the same problems you're having or the same, yeah. I would imagine. They're a little ahead of me, I think, but yeah. uh, or probably a lot ahead of me. But uh, but they're still young, and I, I can kind of relate to them more than like Richard Schmidt. He's obviously yeah. rocking it, but <laughs> I can't relate to him. He's yeah. a master, and he, you know, just a, anything yeah. he does is going to be good, and everybody's going to love it. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, that's good. Those are good. That's, that's a good answer. Those are good answers, definitely. Um, now, if you could paint anything, and, and you, you know, if you could paint anything that you wanted to, um, what would it be? I mean, it could be subject. It could be, you know, I mean, it'd probably be subject. I would imagine. But what would you paint? I mean, portrait commissions, or do you, would you prefer to do more? Again, just well, your dream thing to paint, or your dream subject matter, dream. Well, it's. Genre. I think it's always going to be figurative, as far as the genre. I don't know, it's changing. Like right now, I'm actually going through a transition. Um, for a while, I was doing just uh, Ukrainian, Russian farm life scenes. Uh, right now, I'm kind of transitioning more to just nude figure, mm -hmm. just focus on just the body, not necessarily any time period or, or country, just the human figure. Mm -hmm. And trying to, like I was saying, going a little more graphic and, and um, 
abstract um, with the with the composition. Yeah. So focusing just on the figure. So I'll probably have slightly more finished you know, skin tones, and then the composition itself will just be a little more yeah. graphic. Um, well, excellent. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing that because I have seen, obviously, you in class do some figures, and I've seen your drawings are really ridiculously strong in, in figure. Mm -hmm. um, painting wise, you know, I haven't seen a lot of fin more finished, you know, which you've probably done a lot. I have. You know, so, <laughs> so that'd be interesting. So, that'd be nice to see. And yeah, I, I actually, the reason I'm, one of the reasons I decided to do that is because I noticed that there's kind of a disconnect between my drawings and my paintings. Um, my drawings are a little stronger, I think. And so I, I wanted, I kind of looked and I thought, well, what, why is that? And it's really, it's my mentality, the way I approach it. Um, when I'm drawing, I kind of, I think completely differently than when I'm painting. And I think by doing these figure paintings, it's kind of connect them a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And I'll be able to borrow more from my drawing skills to apply to the painting skills. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I yeah. mean, these are just kind of... No, I, I, it makes right it, it makes a lot of sense though. I mean, even from from all the experiences that I've had, I mean, that mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. So, um, really looking forward to seeing mm. how those come out because I remember seeing some of the some of the reference you were going to paint from and stuff, and it looked really good. So it should be nice. It should be fun to. Yeah, we'll you think see. more? I'm excited. So to do more that. Jacob Collins ish. We go tighter um, figures. Are you going to go more Schmidt? Are you going to go more tight more? figures? But um, still, you know, Steve Houston maybe. Steve or? Houston, yeah, he's actually the guy I'm looking at a lot right now. Steve Houston's um, figures are, they're expressive, but then they're really tight in areas where they, they, there needs to be detail. Yeah. Um, and then the compositions are a little more abstract, right? They're very, uh, very graphic. Yeah. My next question would be most ex unexpected aspect of being a professional, like something that's really either surprised you, maybe it's the workload, maybe it's just, you know, I don't know, continuing education, how, how hard it is, I don't, I don't know. I guess there's a few, I don't know if there's one main thing, but um, one is how difficult it is to keep your skills. <laughs> you know, you get good and you, you get to the point where you're really confident in your skills and then you'll maybe f focus on something else for a while. You know, like instead of doing, like let's say you get really good at landscape, you go out every week and you just get real good and you're confident in your landscapes. And then you stop for six months and you focus on figures or portrait. And you go back out playing air painting, and you lost so much of it. Yeah, I know. It's, like, it's maddening. That's... It's maddening. It really is. And it's, <laughs> that's the thing I know. You know, you try to preface people with that, and you say, you know, just it's one thing to get your skills. It's another thing. And the maintenance is not all that bad. You, you just can't take extended breaks like you're yeah. you at all. And there's I mean, so many really things. Like, like, you know, I want to be a well-rounded artist, and so that means I have to do a lot of things. You know, landscape, still life, portrait, figure composing a scene narratives narratives yeah. i mean there's just so much drawing and painting you were preaching to the choir um, my friend because <laughs> yeah, so you can't do it all, all the time no, you're gonna you you're gonna lag at one at a bunch of them and then you go back and you have to bring your skills back up and then the other ones go down yeah i it's think it's, as long as it's they think that they're all progressively yeah. getting better because i look at my drawings from like and i was laughing last night in life drawing class i was looking at 1998 when i was teaching 14 figure drawing classes or you know 14 <laughs> drawing classes a week and my you know i was so effortless with the demos and everything was so fluid and i think that was probably one of my strongest periods of demoing mm -hmm. was 10 years ago 12 years ago you know and you just now yeah. i'm working on more paintings you come in to draw and you're good but you just lose that little snap that you used yeah. to have and you have to get it back and you have to spend six months getting it back probably or it, doing it fairly regular, so yeah. I agree with you on that one. That's a rough one. Yeah, so that would yeah. be the that, one. that. That's one. Um, another one is balancing just lifestyle. I mean, it. They, I guess they kind of both go together. Is it takes so much time to maintain your skills that you got to find ways to you got to find the time to do that. And you know, as a kid, I didn't have many responsibilities, but now, you know. Yeah, at the same time that I'm becoming a professional, you know, I have more responsibilities as an adult, and all those things come together, and it's like lop a couple kids on a, there, and I, yeah, you know, and I don't even have a family yet. <laughs> no, no. So it's, it's pretty maddening. I can't imagine what that's going to be like. Just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's so, a, you know, well, yeah. You'll finding the time, balancing. You know, the hardest part is I think time. Yeah. So that takes me to my next question, which would be probably your favorite. You know, art assignment. My biggest one it was the one I really planned out, um, did a lot of prep work for. Uh, it was the chopping lessons painting. Mm -hmm. 
um, where I, you know, I did two photo shoots with two models separate. First, I had to do a bunch of sketches, kind of figure out the the staging, and and then I had the photo shoot with them, and then I put them together in Photoshop and. I had I think eight different photographs in that painting. You know the the cabin in the back, the the grassy lawn, the pile of wood. Um, yeah, those are challenging. The, the background. Yeah, yeah, just that was really fun because it was the first time that I was thinking big scale narrative. Um, I don't think I, I haven't done anything since then that ambitious. Mm -hmm. um, but mainly because it's I think it's still a little too early in my career to be doing a lot of those. Yeah. Um, it hasn't sold yet because I don't have a large following of, of that collectors. Kind of, yeah. You know, and people aren't willing to spend that much money, and also take up that much wall space with my paintings yet. Yeah. Um, so, is that something you'd want to do more of down the road? Probably. probably? Yeah. yeah. Probably more when they're when, selling when, better yeah. and yeah. people are, want more of that kind of stuff from me. Uh, but right now, I think focus more on smaller efforts efforts yeah, yeah not such crazy big scenes <laughs> here yeah i've been there <laughs> yeah but yeah. Well, yeah that was very fun it, yeah. it, it took a while but it, the whole process was very easy it just kind of flowed through yeah a nice piece things. i mean a really nice yeah. piece. and it's the one of my favorites the, the result was one of my favorites not just the the process the process yeah the result is one of my favorites yeah then that takes me. You're, you know, you're you're 26 now. So some future goals. What do you what do you where do you see yourself heading in the next 10 years or so? What what what, what, do you, what would you like to see? What would you like to accomplish? What would you be heading towards? Uh, well, I mean, painting more. <laughs> Obviously, just uh, I think that's a given. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I mean, I've been doing a lot of teaching on the internet, doing yeah. videos and stuff, and that's been taking up a lot of my time. Um, taking away a little from my painting, actually, and it will. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, and, but um, I don't know. It's it's worth it. I'm enjoying it, um, and so yeah. I mean, as far as the those the videos, I think I want to just build a, a good uh, company that provides good educational material for, for yeah. artists. Um, uh, the, the world is becoming very digital, very internet based, and I think uh, now is a good time to really head in that direction. Yeah, do yeah. that. And you see artists, everybody's starting yeah. to do that. Yeah. I mean, there's online schools popping up everywhere now. Yeah. It's like every month there's a new online school that pops up. Yeah. So it's nice because uh, you know the world is uh, <clears throat> is more of a global. You know, like we're doing that too with the atelier. I'll be mm -hmm. working on one, and I've um, been doing that for quite a while. And and I think just going forward. For me, because you know the business model's been 20 years now. I mean, it just seems like a natural progression. But um, I think I wanted to try to do that 10 years ago, and there was just no technology. There was nothing. Yeah. Nothing was around. I mean, I tried to do the a timing business model. Has to be and, right. Yeah, the timing definitely has to be there. Yeah. So, well, that'd be fun to see that transpire and kind of what 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 comes from that. And I'm sure mm -hmm. it'll be great stuff because I've already seen some of the stuff you're doing. It's really good. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll be it'll be fun um, to just continue to watch you you know evolve. Out in there, like what one of your favorite books is, or what, what what's your favorite art book? I mean, do, you know, that's one I did not put on there, but I thought it would be kind of fun because everybody has their particulars. It's hard favorite to pick one, book, but God. it'd be probably easier to say top five favorite art books. But um, if you had to pick one, like if you were on a desert island and you had one book that you could take with you or whatever, you know, what what would you what would you pick? And that's a tough that one. That's so hard. <laughs> Because Are you going to be anatomy? So many, oh, is it going to be a painter? Is it going to be all prima? Is it going to be, what is it going to be? I mean, you know, you, you got one book that you really uh, would. Probably all a prima, just because it's got, it's such a good balance between just fun to read, really good information, also good well-rounded information. You know, yeah. It's good for painting, drawing, and then painting any subject. Or, you kind of nailed it, it on that one. I yeah, think. it's just a really well-rounded book for artists in general. Yeah. Um, but the book that I probably have opened the most is probably Goldfinger's Anatomy book. Wow, that one, I, I would mean, not have expected that. I, mean, I don't I, either because it, yeah, it's it's a great book. It's, I mean, it's a good reference book. Yeah, well, you yeah, always yeah, go yeah. to fantastic it. Fantastic for referring. That, that, you know, I just uh, man, it's dry. But you know, well, yeah. right? I don't read it. <laughs> I know, yeah, exactly. But <laughs> I don't, <laughs> even the draw from it's pretty dry. But but I do. Uh, 
I mean, I've, <laughs> I've blown out one of those. The binder is completely shot on it, yeah. and it's in pieces. So it's ripped that's got apart, a, that's got but, a lot of use as well. I, I admit, you know, for mostly for cross referencing for any other anatomy book that you're yeah. going to use. You and know. I also, I, I'm the kind of guy I don't have a very good memory, so I forget the anatomy. <laughs> The names or the insertions or just Both. in general? Both, yeah. I just, I, I'll, I'll study it really intensely. A few months later, I've forgotten everything. Yeah. It's hard. It, 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 that's another area that, I mean, to teach anatomy well, I mean, having to know the names, insertions, and origins, yeah, and functions. Yeah, teaching it's good. It forces me to go wow. back and learn Yeah, it's a rough time. one. So one thing a lot of people don't know about us is that we've, we've traveled quite a, well, quite a bit. You know, we, we did a Russia trip a couple years ago, and that yeah. segues kind of into, I mean, you're a really big fan of repins, obviously. And yeah. I mean... Was that one of the trips where you really got into the repping stuff when we were? No, I was I was in repping before that. Way before but that, it it in- S- made it even stronger. Solidified seeing that. them in person. It blew me away. Was, I yeah. mean, that was crazy good stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I, what was your? Um, I mean, when we traveled, obviously it was really fun because we were traveling with your folks. We were going through um, a lot of villages. We were kind of staying with relatives, so we weren't doing the normal. Um, hotel. It was real. Yeah, it was right? the real deal. We we didn't stay no in a toilets, hotel. No toilets. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. It, it was a mix of all kinds of crazy stuff. It was yeah, fun. Yeah. My parents tried to make it as um, as cheap as possible, uh, of course. Yeah. And so they we have friends in all the parts that we stayed at, and so they called up all their friends and you know asked them if we could stay in their house. And one of those places was um, on a farm in Ukraine. Yeah. No, no plumbing. No plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was a great experience. It, um, I got a lot of good reference, you know, yeah. real reference. It was yeah. actual people that are living that lifestyle that I, I was painting at the time. Yeah. So um, that was a, a great trip for me as far as seeing, actually experiencing what I'm trying to depict in my paintings. Yeah, you almost have to do that. I mean, yeah. it makes such a huge difference. I know I have yet to get to painting some of that reference, but I'm going to. Mm-hmm. But it was fun. I mean, um, it was it was uh, it was fun to to kind of um, you know see that that was you know that was the way people still are living there is pretty rural. I mean, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you could you could do some fun stuff with that. So mm-hmm. I was really man, that was so cool that trip. But hopefully in the future we'll be doing some trips together too. So mm-hmm. it's one of those things where. Um, you know, I think that's something that it's fun to find artistic travel partners that, you know, can actually take the time to go do that kind of stuff. A lot yeah. of people are too, their lives are too complex, you know. It's fun to travel with another artist. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just the perspective. It's funny because I, I imagine when we come back, we both have paintings that are almost <laughs> very similar because all the yeah. angles of people. But, but they were. The takes will be so different. I mean, the Well, you've we done the, the... Done a few pieces. You've done. And then I did one, I think, that we got from the exact same... Yeah. Shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Did. Yeah. And yeah, the paintings are totally yeah, different. Yeah. I mean, the, the style so. is different. It's just, I think it's kind of fun, like maybe some way down, down in history, you know, if, depending on where we end up, but that would be fun to look back and you can see the different paintings that were mm-hmm. done. Because, you know, you see that in past uh, parts of history too, where artists yeah. used Same. to paint similar subject matter, you go on, you know, similar areas or mm-hmm. would travel together. And that was, that's really cool. So yeah, no, I thought it was really a great trip. Um, and I think that's just another thing that helped solidify a bond between the two of us, just as far as friends. I mean, just kind of fun. To, to you know get outside the school I don't get to normally do that with a lot of the instructors and go get to see them mm-hmm. just in regular life you know everyone still thinks of you as a teacher or a mentor right. and not as a regular person that just is you know just a regular regular yeah. guy just kind of going through life so yeah that was that was good that was a really good period and um, that was a lot of fun and and, and and hopefully I think this year we may do something so we'll see see how it plays out but maybe we'll do a little something on that when we get back a little interview or something or a yeah. little Less, be, less drinking next time. <laughs> less drinking, yes. <laughs> the vodka, the vodka. You can, yes. Yeah. The Russians. They made you drink. <laughs> I did drink a lot. <laughs> yes, I came back pickled. Um, that was a fun trip. I had a yeah. lot of great times uh, with you there, over there. So, but um, well, thanks for taking the time. I mean, I know mm-hmm. you just finished a class uh, at yeah. the Atelier, and so it was an anatomy I, class. Yeah, <laughs> and I snuck in and and uh, had to inter- you know interview you right after. So I appreciate you taking yeah. that time because I know that that can be kind of hard, but. Um, well, thanks, Dan. I mean, uh, again, mm-hmm. you're you're one of my favorite students. You were and, and still are, you know, and, and a good friend of mine. So, um, I just cool. wish you all the best in the future, and it'll be fun to see where everybody ends up and, mm-hmm. and how you you do going forward. I'm sure it'll, I always knew you would do great. I mean, I did. Yeah. You know, usually you can tell early on. Um, you can see seeds of you know the the uh, the talent there, and then it's just so many variables that have to play out if the person's going to realize the true talent, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. they got to just do so much sacrifices. So many things have to be made decisions. Yeah. So uh, I think it's mainly the hunger. Yeah. It, that's the thing I'm most, um, 
the happiest that I just kind of got naturally is that for some reason I just Driven. I want it so bad <laughs> <laughs> like it, it makes staying up at night late at night working so much easier when you just want it really bad yeah passionate versus just obligation you yeah. know yeah that, that, you know my wife will often look at me and go what is driving you what is the we don't have kids we don't do it. why are you working so hard and I just just wired to work hard yeah. I like it it's fun it's mm-hmm. um a passionate thing so you, you you don't lose steam in it at all so i totally i totally get that and uh you could see that in you very early on so it was um it's just fun fun I'm, I'm i'm just amazed i mean if you would have told me maybe 10 years ago 12 years ago when i met you you know be sitting down interviewing you in 10 years and you'd still be here <laughs> yeah i would have blown my mind you know um but everybody's yeah. still stuck it out you know we have every teacher's 10 plus years and that's almost impossible yeah. to get an environment that's so good that you want people would want to stay in it that long which oh, is well, one of the coolest things about it it's a great environment I yeah mean, yeah I'm, I'm really lucky to have been you've seen a lot here. of the phases I mean a, a great deal of them I mean you were not in the yeah. very beginning obviously I think I was when I started it you were probably two <laughs> three or something I don't know you were how long has I've been at 20 years now so 20? you were six I was six I was you still know? in Russia yeah yeah in you, Ukraine. You were, isn't that amazing in so that, that's crazy <laughs> But, um, but anyway, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of cut it off here. And I think uh, uh, maybe we'll do a follow-up in the future or something as, as things progress. And, mm-hmm. uh, but anyway, thanks again, Stan, for yeah. coming in. It's really cool All to right. have you. Thanks again, you guys, for, for tuning in for this, uh, this month's uh, podcast on the instructor interviews. We'll continue to do them going forward. So um, I look forward to uh, interviewing the rest of the instructors and, and sharing their insights with you all out there in the uh, in Internet net world there. So um, <laughs> anyway, have a good one. And, We'll take care and we'll see you soon. Where'd that come from? <laughs> you, can, you can cut that out. You can, you can that one a cut. That was awesome. Like, then I think of like, where, the, where am I going with this? Yeah, internet. Uh...